Now we want to turn to Europe because there was a lot of European data that came out. Some of it was a bit concerning when you look at Germany. And but and by concerning, I just mean in terms of growth rate because growth rate <clears throat> has come down. But then when you look at France, something's very similar where they're just kind of you know flatlining while Italy remains a bit on the on the uh, bright spot. So when you start looking at uh, Eurozone manufacturing, the survey was for 57.1. Actual came in at 58.5. And then uh, the services. So what our expectation was based on what we saw from Germany was for this to come in uh, below the um, the previous month, which it did. But again, still a bit stronger than expectations, our expectations. And, and it, But that's really driven based on how good Italy was and how France maintained some of their strength. But then on the services side, the expectation was for 55.4. The actual came in at 54.7. So that's where you're seeing some of that pressure kind of pick back up when you're looking at inflation, when you're looking at wages, and what is really available for the local consumer within that region. And this is just, you know, kind of (laughs) shining a big bright light on it. Market Eurozone manufacturing PMI input prices at a record high. Uh, And then Market Zone uh, Europe manufacturing PMI input prices. Again, all of them are at these record highs. So you have to look at where things are sitting on the Eurozone manufacturing and then services. Both of them are just going into these new all-time highs, which is this negative contribution to the consumer because... Wages aren't going up the same way in Europe as they are in the U.S., so the consumer is just in a different place, and you're you're seeing a lot of that pressure really build up, which is impacting that growth rate that we've been talking about. And this is just looking at composites. You're looking at composite prices, manufacturing, and services. So you're just looking at the composite still continues to go up, but manufacturing is starting to to just kind of sit here. And and the one that thing that we've been talking about is manufacturing is just going to kind of hang out where services are the one that are going to are going to continue to be that driver and that boost for that underlying price. But again, we're not seeing any change. When you're looking at these prices, it's just they're going to be stuck there and especially going to be driven based on many EU industries are reporting continuous um, equipment and material shortages, which is when you look at motor vehicle, electrical equipment, machinery, you're just seeing this huge issue in terms of the availability of products, which is keeping prices high, keeping prices where they are versus some of this normalcy that I think many were hoping to see. But then when you look at that bond buying spree, and as Lagarde was talking today, there's there's going to be that pause and, and that pause in QE because there is a lot of pressure. You're seeing inflation really ratchet up, which is why we do believe that the Fed continues with their tapering plans in November. As many countries, Russia had a big increase in their, uh, in their uh, rate, their central bank rate, and we expect that to continue just given the inflationary pressures that are continuing to build up in the background. And this is when you start looking at euro area versus U.S. inflation. So it's funny. It's funny because the U.S. CPI is actually outpacing euro, the euro area. And and they're both going up, but they're going up in different trends. But yet the ECB has already talked about uh, and is and is actually rolling out this pause and the Fed still hasn't. So that's why I do believe that you're going to get that employment continues to get better. Uh, GDP growth is still there. So you're not, there's no reason to maintain this level, especially given the amount of liquidity that remains in the system. And this is just looking at that annual inflation rate in September 2021, with the euro area coming at 3.4% and the EU at 3.6%. So again, you're seeing just that whole region really go back up and come really just, just above the levels that we saw in 2011 with more pressure behind it. So again, you're starting to see this inflation that everyone's been asking for and talking about finally come to fruition and really become this negative driver as we um as we go through the remainder of Q4 and into 2022. So when you look at the unprecedented amount of inflation, so the contribution of liquid fuels and lubricants, again, through the roof, contribution of electricity, again, through the roof with more to to remain. And then just so when you look at just what is the contribution of just energy and power 
this is a perfect example of, again, the biggest impact to the consumer because this is money that is going to come out of their pockets. These are, you know, indu the, the, indust the industrial prices are going to go up so that they have to increase the prices of their goods, which again, it also pushes up inflation for the consumer. So you see how it just compounds on itself to become worse and worse. And then the consumer confidence survey, uh, you know, had got uh, is 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 now firmly negative. Personal finance situation is coming down, and then the general economic situation over the next twelve months has also gotten worse. So you're seeing in the UK some of these pressure points because the UK is is, is essentially similar to where the US is, but without the same type of stimulus. Plus, you have British exit, so there's a lot of concern in the UK. And, and the reason why we call that out is because it's not just Europe. It's it's not just mainland Europe. It's not just Eastern Europe, Western Europe, you know, Asia. It's also the UK. It's it's a lot of these growth engines of the global economy that continue to face these pressure points as German import import prices reach a whole <laughs> a, a new record. And, and this is only goes back to 1993, but this goes back as far as we can. This is the highest it's been since the 1970s, which again is keeping that inflation because they are an exporting nation. So if they're importing price increases, they're going to export those price increases as well. And then when you start looking at the uh, France is also starting to see some of these pressure points. Now, things have been okay in France, but now you're starting to see people get concerned for the future. So the consumer confidence or the future financial situation has deteriorated significantly from the, uh, from the peak in the beginning of the year. And then when you look at consumer confidence, buying opportunities have come negative again, as again, inflation impacts, wages don't keep up. That's when you start to see that consumer, which is why we're starting to see the services soften in terms of that underlying demand. But when we look at the Eurozone aggregate, the consumer confidence, the expectation was for negative five, came in at negative 4.8, still worse than the previous month, but not as bad as expected. But just, again, it's just kind of that, that back and forth with, as we talked about, the PMI levels, you know, with the, uh, with the services disappointing and the manufacturing uh, increasing, but the composite was expected at 55.2, came in at 54.3 because it's weighted towards the services. And that's why as services get worse, that's going to drag down that whole component as money supply shrunk slightly from, uh, from the previous month. And that's something that will continue based, especially based on Lagarde's comments. And then when you look at the Eurozone loans to businesses, you're starting to get a little bit of a tick up as loans to households are coming slightly down. So you're starting to get a little bit of a, a you know, reopening of the of businesses, starting to get some of this uh, balancing act, which is a net positive for longer term growth. We just need to see that accelerate a bit. But given where rates are, where inflation is, and where the consumer sits, as well as their prices going up, you know, businesses are still going to be a bit uh, hesitant to do or invest as much as I think people would hope. Now, when we start, when we flip to Germany, so manufacturing came in above estimates. The expectations were for 56.6. And instead, they came in at 58.2. Well, I was expecting a much bigger drop, especially versus prior. Instead, it was essentially in line with prior. But the services, as we were, uh, as and then we thought services was going to be a bit better. Instead, was way worse. <laughs> and it came in, the expectations were 55.2, came in at 52.4. And then the composite coming, it was expected at 54.3, came in at 52. So again, you had a, a fairly sizable slowdown. And I think, you know, based on what we're seeing, it's going to be uh, these pressure points of, you know, when does manufacturing come back? It came back a bit more, but these inflationary pressures have just exploded. And again, that is really hitting the service and consumer sector. So expect IFO expectations were for 96.6, came in at 95.4. Current assessment was expected at 99.4, came in at 100.1. Uh, Business climate was expected at 98, came in at 97.7. So things are getting slightly worse than prior, kind of moving in the wrong direction. And it's really because import price index was expected at 1.5, came in at 1.3%, still moving in the wrong direction. And then when you look at consumer confidence, though, this is getting a bit better for November, was expected at negative 0.5, came in at 0.9. So again, we do expect that services to find some footing here. 
So then when you look at German wage deals, so Germany uh, for global inflationary pressures, as of now, unions are accepting deals significantly worse than originally sought, keeping prospects of wage spiral low, but it also impacts how much they have to spend as inflation goes up. So when you look at where these new deals are, wages are not going up and are not keeping pace, which again is going to impact the consumer significantly in their ability to buy homes, their ability to, again, cycle that money back into the economy, which leads to the bigger slowdown. And this is looking at those supply problems continuing to weigh. When you look at manufacturing, um, you know, expectations continue to worsen uh, across manufacturing, service sector, uh, trade, and, and but construction continue to get better. Still negative, but still better. So again, you're still seeing a lot of these headwinds really roll through the German economy, which again then leads to what the underlying European area is going to look like in the near term. And that's when you start looking at this inflationary accelerated to 4.6% in Germany in October, again, taking out the highs from early 1990s, which is why we're starting to see Lagarde start to pause. And we expect to see something very similar out of the Fed. And this is German producer prices year over year. Uh, Survey was for 12.8, actual at 14.2%. So again, this is just a, the vertical move continues. And just based on input prices, we don't see that pairing off anytime soon. And then when you start looking at France, is a little bit different. So business confidence was expected at 110, came in at 113. Manufacturing com, uh, confidence was expected at 105, came at 107. <clears throat> so you're starting to see things get a little bit better. French manufacturing was expected at 54, came in at 53.5. Services was expected at 55.5, came in at 56.6. So that this was what we expected to happen in both Germany and France. And then it actually did happen in France. Consumer confidence ticked down slightly from 101 to 99. And uh, and the reason why is when you look at PPI, it, uh, it surged to 1.7% with PPI year over year at 11.6%, up one point set, almost up almost 1.6%. Again, that is a big problem when you start looking at that future, which is why French expectations of the future have worsened in such a way. So then when we look a little bit differently, so Spain had a huge surge in PPI, expected, uh, uh, you know, came in at 5.2%, prior was 1.9%, PPI year over year, last month was 18%, came in at 23.6%. Again, that that just, uh, it's an all stop on activity with industrial sales in Italy uh, coming in, uh, you know, a bit better than than expectations, but a little bit lower than prior. But again, you're still seeing some of this growth out of Italy which is this bright spot as you know, um, uh, profitability went up and you're seeing that consumer act better. Now, uh, uh, Draghi came out and he's talked about cutting taxes, but increasing the age of retirement for pensions, which, you know, we'll see how, if he can get uh, this, this um, what's the best way to put it? This uh, uh, compromise through the system to try to offset some of that longer term risk to, uh, to the balance sheet. And this is just looking at industrial sales, again, surging back to the highs, taking out the highs from 2008, as Italy does remain that bright spot versus a lot of the other regions. Now, on a percentage basis, Italy can't do as much as Germany, but it can offset some of that slowdown, which is what we're starting to see, which is why we don't get, we don't expect this huge revision lower, but just, you know, expectations coming down as Germany continues to struggle input prices go up, inflation goes up, and you start to see the fiscal stimulus shut down a little bit, but the monetary stimulus a stimulus essentially flatline, which again is going gonna, is gonna to impact some of this growth as we go forward. So now that we've covered that, we want to go into Asia and look at what are some of the adjustments that have happened in China and where do some things sit on uh, uh, you know, so far on defaults, not no defaults, the uh, the housing sector, and what is happening on the export side as well, and credit impulses when we look at China. <laughs> 